Welcome to Kalisa Friendship Unit. My name is Chris. I'm here with Brian. What's going on? Jake. Hey, guys. And Jeremy. Hey, guys. Xbox as a brand, Microsoft as a company, has a lot to show us on July 23rd. It is going to be the Xbox Series X blowout event from Xbox. It's going to have all their first-party games, including Halo Infinite. And we're going to talk about why this event's so important for Microsoft, what they need to show, and maybe take a couple of stabs at what they are going to show. Uh, but before we get into all that, if you love us, please sub us. We would really appreciate your support. If you like this video, give us a like and let us know down below if you're hyped for July, uh, the July Xbox event, and maybe if you have any predictions, we'll, we'll be responding to you in those comments. All right, guys, I think we should start with some context. Uh, this is, we've, we've talked for years about how Microsoft has not had the best generation. I mean, it's no surprise. It's, it's like not a secret. They have not had a great generation. And it seems like all the puzzle pieces are there. Like, they have Game Pass now, they have, which all their first party games come to on day one, they have uh, backwards compatibility, they have uh, none, none of those anti-consumer practices that were in the original marketing of the Xbox One, those are all gone. They All the pieces are there, they have a promising looking console, they've been buying game studios, but are I think this is where they have to all come together. I don't know if you guys agree. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm a little less convinced that all the pieces are there, but yeah, this is their chance. The I don't know if you guys remember, but the Xbox One event was literally a disaster. I mean, you weren't allowed to have used games on that, and the console had to be online all the time. Like that was the original marketing of it. It was horrible. So Yeah, the initial reaction was not positive. Yeah, so this is like I, I this is it. This is like their first chance in like seven years to to really launch a new generation, right? Yeah, and they had an event a little while ago during like peak coronavirus in the U.S. and it was pretty that? underwhelming because yeah, the the first peak, but it was a pretty underwhelming event because they didn't really show much besides say like, hey, we've got some cool tech and you guys will love it, and these are all games that you'll be able to utilize our tech with and that's about it and then playstation comes out with this killer event where they show off all their great first party games and great launch games so microsoft really needs to like meet that event quality that playstation just had yeah yeah let's talk i guess specifically about what they what they need to do like you said, they they have to at least meet Sony, which it sounds like they're going to. Sony showed a lot of games and a lot of first party games, and this time Xbox is going to show first party games. But what else do they have to do to kind of have a good showing? We need to see the price as well. <laughs> yeah, we we have to know that it's at least comparable or less than the PlayStation. It's, That's for sure. It's time to show the price. And yeah. we want to see Master Chief. We want to see his face. Yeah. yeah. We, That's yeah. what's going to happen, dude. They're, they're going to show it. They're going to go all out and be right. like, this is what you wanted. Okay, yeah. Let's talk about Halo. Because Halo 3 came out like at the moment that we're recording this. Uh, what What do we want? What do we need to see from Halo? Because honestly, all the Halo shit that I've seen since Infinite's been shown in 2018 hasn't been that crazy. Like, we've seen very little. They need to show a shitload for this game. Yeah, I want it to be like done. I I, yeah, I hope it's done at this point. Like it's coming out soon, so I want to see like done games. Like when Breath of the Wild dropped, and everyone was like, "Oh shit, out of nowhere, Breath of the Wild." That's what I want it to be with Halo. Like Halo is at absolute peak right now. I'd say it's at literally Halo is at its peak since halo 3 came out on the 360 which is ironic because it's at its peak be with halo 3 coming out again basically like halo everyone's i mean it's number two on steam right now like people want to see halo and they want it they now is the time to sell people on the next halo game now is the time to be like hey buy an xbox so you can play as master beef that game better be good yeah but the problem is like you don't have to just buy an xbox you can stream it, or you can like. 
well, play it on your PC. It's like they don't really know like what they've committed to. But that, I, I think that's and, like, fine because they own the Windows platform. Like, right. that sounds good to me. But like Halo Five sucked. Like, I don't really know how to say it. It was really bad. <laughs> well, I think that's kind of the question. Like, how do you? Like, Xbox's brand in general and Halo's brand in particular are kind of so damaged at this point. Like, what would it take to make consumers interested? Like, people are obviously going to buy Halo, but to, like, move the needle. People who weren't who are going to see this conference who weren't already planning on getting the Xbox One Series X, like, what what would it take? You know what I mean? And, and they're kind of in a tricky predicament. Jake made the comparison to Batwa. Like, Zelda is a series that is known for kind of reinvention, and so when they come out and they're like, oh, you can fucking climb trees and shit, people are like, oh, that's cool. Halo, like, you know, there's kind of an established formula. How receptive would people be to, like, veering away from that? How much can you play into it while still maintaining interest? I'm not sure what the answer is. Yeah, I think a lot is riding on this Halo Infinite release. Because if it if they just come out and they release, like, Halo Infinite slash Halo Six, and like, yeah, this is Call of Duty, just your Master Chief. Everyone's gonna. That's like, that's the nail in the coffin for Microsoft right there. The Xbox is done for this generation. Yeah, but damn, they, bold, bold move. I well, mean, why like, else would you get an Xbox? Right, there's the tech's great, but they haven't showed any games that you can't get on a PC. There's, I mean, you could get Halo on PC, but like, there's nothing else going for the Xbox at this point. And the tech is great, but it's not like better than meaningfully better than the PS5. I think everyone assumes they're going to be around the same price. You know, maybe that'll be a surprise, but I think we're all expecting around a seven hundred to eight hundred dollar price tag. Is that fair? <laughs> I mean, all the rumors are five hundred, but I, I have that no would be idea. Shocking. I have no yeah, idea they're going to make it five hundred dollars. In any event, suppose they say it's five hundred dollars. I assume PlayStation's going to then come out and say ours is four ninety nine or like, five hundred. Like they honestly might just both be five hundred. Yeah, yeah. So like, but then that kind of to me raises the question: What would an interesting, you know, what kind of, what would you want to see from the Halo game? Like, what would make you go like, ooh, I that think, might be. Cool. I think they need to just do a soft reboot on the story. Like, I think like, just like, I, I, I don't know if you guys know what happened in Halo Five, but like, just, just, just end it. Just like put it to rest, put it to bed. It was bad. I personally, I, I think the term infinite means so i don't know if it means okay hear me out i think it would be cool to have like a a more open halo game i'm not saying like an open world halo but like you you like explore the halo organically and i don't know that that seems cool to me at least but i think the multiplayer has to stop veering towards the call of duty-ness that it was in halo 4 and to a lesser extent halo 5 and really needs to go like we've been playing halo 2 anniversary a lot and it's like that that gameplay is not found in in modern multiplayer like the arena based style stuff and it's still it holds up and it's really fun it is are you looking for like a destiny style game i don't know i'm worried about that like i don't i don't want it to be like i that and yeah you guys make a point like how do you how do you please everyone for halo because i don't i don't want like a an M- not an MMO. I know Destiny's not an MMO, but it is like a a lot of people on on one map in single player. I guess single player and multiplayer just merged in Destiny. Yeah, and it's weird. Like if we were to try and predict or guess what people are looking for, like you can kind of look at how things have been trending trending on the MCC collection. Like Halo Three just dropped today as we're recording. Like Chris said, the MCC is currently peaking at 50,000 players, but we've been playing Halo 2 since it came out on MCC, and just yesterday, the peak player count was 5,000 players. Um, So, well, we've been really enjoying the traditional, like, arena-style gameplay. I don't know if that is necessarily going to hold up. Like, they're not pulling in enough players to really say this is sustainable this is going to sell copies this is what people want so maybe they do need to really change things up from the traditional arena gameplay as much as i'm enjoying the mcc games from old the numbers really aren't supporting like just bring out a rebooted halo 3 kind of thing yeah and maybe that's the point of giving us the mcc 
is so that you can keep with the old. Right. Do you think they could maybe try like a almost God of War style soft reboot that's like more narratively driven? Does that if that does that comparison kind of make sense? I don't know. I guess I mean as Jake said, who the fuck knows what like consumers want? I'm not even sure what I want. That's kind of what I was. Yeah, at. I agree. Yeah, I don't know either. Well, I guess we'll we'll know kind of soon. Okay, so since we're on the games, and we'll come back to the hardware. What? I, I guess Hellblade. Re- we don't. Re- first of all, Microsoft hasn't had any real crazy IP this generation. I mean, they've had Forza, which I don't think any of us want to really talk about, which we'll probably see because you've got to launch a console with a racing game because they look good. And Hellblade, they bought that studio, and Hellblade Two is confirmed. Uh, but uh, I mean, besides Gears of War, they, I mean, they've had some like moderate successes to duds, like Sea of Thieves. Like, what, what do we want to be shown? Because this is presumably when, you know, they're gonna show their hand, like PlayStation or Sony did, uh, just just last month. And it, like, I know it's hard to even think of Microsoft IP because it's it's been a minute yeah i'm just thinking the games that they have been releasing and i feel like they're trying to fit into the party game kind of fun i don't know like they're they're definitely playing towards game pass which i think lends towards like co-op party kind of games oh yeah we game pass be yeah and sona sony's been the narrative driven rpg stuff um so Unfortunately, I don't know if we're necessarily going to see Microsoft drop like some big RPGs, big hitters like Horizon or God of War equivalents, but so maybe. They did, they did buy Obsidian. They did, but Obsidian just came out with a game. So they're years away from another RPG. Yeah. I, I think Banjo 3 would be nice. <laughs> not gonna happen though why not because no one gives a fuck about platformers right now uh, 3d platformers like there, there isn't another one i mario. mean yeah mario's mario though i bet people would go off on banjo 3. i would like it if i like it, I, it wasn't the banjo like haven't oh, the, the attempts at reboots been kind of garbage well that's because they were like not banjo games but yeah you're right they have ukulele did pretty well and that was like the banjo kind of a spin-off. Yeah, it's I don't know a, what you yeah call it. There, it showed that there was a demand for it. Right. So maybe. They have rare. They have rare. It it's setting like an impossible standard for yourself though. Like when you say Banjo 3, like you're never gonna meet what people say. It's like uh Half Life 3. Like you just can't meet that expectation. It's not to the same degree, but that's like probably the most revered 3D platforming franchise. That's not Mario. Aside yeah. from Mario. Oh. Well, let's be real. Like, oh, Sonic. <laughs> Val, Val was like, we're not going to do Half-Life 3, and then they dropped the biggest VR game that's ever happened. So, Still not Half-Life 3. Yeah, but I don't know if anyone was that disappointed. But Also, on the on the Rare topic, uh, Sea of Thieves hit Steam not too long ago and has had like a second life, but people are raving about the game. Chris, I think both of us have played it and neither of us really enjoyed it that much. So it's not really, I don't think it appeals to any of us on this podcast, but I think there's still interest in a market for games like that. So I have a feeling we'll see more games like that, more Game Pass, not necessarily bait, because I'm not going to say, I don't think they're going to be bad games, but they'll be co-op kind of party games like Sea of Thieves. Well, they don't, so that's the thing about, I'll call them Game Pass bait. I'll, I coined it. I'm going to keep it. Um, that's the <laughs> thing about Game Pass bait, though. They don't have to be... So, like, this is why I think Banjo 3E would be good Game Pass bait, because, like, you wouldn't buy it for $60 necessarily, but maybe you get Game Pass for a month to check it out. Like, I think that would... I think a lot of people would be... In, like, you're like, oh, shit, Banjo 3, it actually came out? Like, yeah, I'll check it out for 10 bucks. I think a lot of Or I have Game Pass, I'll check it out. I think a lot of people would do that. They also, I mean, they own Rare, but they don't, like, none of that team is still at Rare. Oh, yeah, no, that but they have the IP. So you would need, like, you, you own the IP, but you, I, I don't know. I just think it's too uh, big yeah, of a I know what you mean. Especially well, since, like, they don't, 
have a great track record making good games. So other IP that I can think of that they have that are moderately interesting uh, would be Perfect Dark, <laughs> which... Uh, moderately interesting. Didn't they also reboot that? Yeah, well, no, they released a sequel a on Xbox ago. 360. Jake and I played that. It was yeah. a lot. <laughs> um, and the uh, Ace Combat series? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, well, I think, I think we're all kind of talking it without saying it. They need they need to show a new IP, like yeah. more than one. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, like several new IP, like good ones, not like a uh, fucking Roblox, like a real a real ass game that looks good. Yeah, all those studios need to show us what they're working on. Yeah, exactly. They, they did. They told us and. I wasn't super impressed when they kind of went through the list. It was a lot of Game Pass bait. That was when we came. That was when Chris coined the phrase "Game Pass bait." It was when they're like, "Yeah, look, this is what we're doing." Yeah. And a lot of those games that we went, at least in the state that we saw them, were not super impressive looking. Like the, even that so, was, like my recollection nice. is. <laughs> well, is no, with there, was, Jake. there was that rare game where with the kind of cool art style where you were like giraffe people <laughs> i don't know um yeah but they were so unmemorable that none of us can really remember any of the games that they were talking about yeah so and we're, like, we're, we're not waiting. we're not excited to see a follow-up for any of them right we're waiting for the big announcements from like obsidian um from hellblade that kind of stuff all right. Well, let's let's talk hardware for a bit. Um, so, do, are we going to get a price, and are we going to get a release date for this damn thing? I think we, we have probably to. need to. Yeah. Like it comes out. It's got to come out before Christmas, unless it's delayed, which means it's really realistically got to come out before Black Friday, which means it's got to come out before like November fifteenth. So they have like three months. A few months. Like you gotta. <laughs> You got to get your pre-orders in. You got to save your money, you know? I mean, that would make the event if they're like pre-order now coming out in a couple of months. Like we, we have to, right? We have to know the price and the release date. Yeah, I think that's a, that's for sure. Do you think that maybe they're holding their cards close to the chest on the release date in case they're not sure whether or not they're going to delay it still? I think it's just... Playing coronavirus pussyfoot with sony i think yeah. they're just like the each one's waiting for the other to shoot first i mean i mean honestly, this could be a this could be a savage christmas season though like the economy may be oh, a no yeah. good yeah it's gonna that's, be bad yeah, that's what i was gonna say is they may just delay it because like this is the pandemic's not going away by christmas time so i don't know although what better time to buy an xbox than when you're stuck at home Exactly. So, so that's the spectrum. Yeah. Is it going to be like the big coronavirus or the little coronavirus? And like, so that's what I'm wondering if maybe they just literally don't, they haven't decided. Yeah, it's possible. And and like once you commit, you commit, you know? Yeah, once you come out and say it, it's different than just waiting, especially if Sony hasn't said anything yet. Yeah. Well, what about the price? Any, like, I know we, we've talked, we've probably talked about this like three times now, but like, Shit's gonna be expensive. Yeah, yeah, the price will be many. <laughs> so, so Sony already showed that they're coming out with two SKUs on day one, one with a disc and one without a disc. So, and I, I think they're gonna, I think there's gonna be another Xbox that come that they show at this event, and and the prices are gonna be reasonable based off of the two. But I think the one we know about is gonna be like six, seven hundred dollars. That's still incredible for what they're packing in there, though. Yeah. <laughs> like, I my agree. PC, your PC, Chris, we, but we blew that budget, and our PCs are about comparable to what the Xbox is supposed to be. Yeah, I agree. I don't know how, I don't know what they're doing, but... <laughs> well, that factors in also to maybe the plans around release. Like, you know, Microsoft is a big company. Could they just decide, like, hey, coronavirus sales might be down but if we sell at a loss we can maybe like get in ahead of sony like and just really eat it as a way to try and get people 
on board with their console and like generate a user base. I don't know. Yeah, I yeah, it's it's, it's that's like, what PlayStation Three did, and it fucking worked. It's so messy <laughs> this this year for like, yeah. but across all spectrums. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Loki, I I don't think they're gonna delay. I think they will announce release by Christmas because I don't think they give a fuck as to how many people buy an Xbox. I also agree with that. I think they are totally they're putting out an Xbox because they need to, but they mm. really don't care about selling hardware anymore. They're going full into game sales. And I was also thinking the the hardware is probably going to be fairly limited, so either way they're going to sell out. Like even if not as many people are going to buy it on day 1 cuz the economy, like I I bet there's not going to be a whole lot on shelves just because of manufacturing issues right now. Right. Yeah, I think you guys are probably right. I just was more putting putting it out there, and I, I also think so, uh, Sony will will be coming out this year. Yeah, I think so too. All right. Well, do we have uh, do we have anything else? I know it's like it's a weird one because this nothing's been normal uh, about video games this year. Like, there's there's two consoles coming out in like three months, and we know like very little. Of, like, we don't even know how much they cost. Like. On the flip side, there isn't. I don't think there's much to know about them, aside from how much they cost. Like, are I mean, are, are we expecting any surprises? I don't think so. Well, like, the, okay, so the only game that They're I PCs know and that's kind of it. Yeah, but like the only game that I know that's coming out on the PS5, like confirmed, is Miles Morales Spider Man on day one. That's the only game that I know will be there on day one, which is just weird to me. Like, usually by now, you know, like everyone's like, yeah, we got like all these games coming out. And I like I know that they'll have their day one lineups and they're just waiting for the uh, for the release dates. But like, it's just so weird. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we're good. Do uh, what? What should our Xbox fans be doing right about now, Brian? Well, does does your dad work for Xbox? Do you know what's going to be going on at this big upcoming event? Go ahead and hammer your thoughts on that down in the word box there. Or it could be your uncle or your cousin um, as well. Or, or maybe your aunt or your niece or, or whatever. But, you know, let us know what you think about all this. And uh, we do occasionally give things away for free here on the Cohesive Friendship Unit channel. So you got to be subscribed to get those free things. So... Uh, go ahead and click that subscribe button because, you know, if you watch this far, you probably liked it. And uh, smoke them if you got them, guys. That's all for me tonight, Chris. Thank you, Brian. Catch you guys next time.